Bokeh Tov, Hanukkah Sameach. We are celebrating light. And um, today we're not going to speak specifically about Tanya. We're going to speak in general about light, especially in connection to Hanukkah. Oh, that's, that's also a good light. Um, specifically about um, uh, a double, so-called double standard that Am Yisrael have always been judged according to. We see it especially in our days, but it doesn't start in our days. It started way before. Um, there's a famous story of the Babanov. So, um, what there is, uh, what we see from the beginning of history is first of all, the famous story that we read in Seder HaAvoida of Yom Kippur. Usually this is a time that everyone pretty much is already uh, not paying attention. You know, at the beginning is the Seder Avoida. It's very interesting to read about the Kohen Gadol and the way he used to um, enter and he used to uh, go to the mikveh and he used to change his clothes from gold to white. Oh, yeah, fair. And there are a few songs also that lift up the uh, environment. But then it comes to Asarah al and the Kinois. The Kinois of, uh, not really Kinois, but the uh, uh, the PU team of the end of Musaf, and one of them there is about, we don't, I don't have a Mahzor, but this is the, the PU, this is Asar Arulia Malchus, um, based on the Aleph base, you know, that's how they used to do the PU team. Eile Ezkera. Eile Ezkera, the Nafshi, Yolayesh Kotho. That's how it goes. It's a very sad tune to the whole. Uh, the jingul. Yeah. The ten. Oh. Sounds of. Yeah. Oh. Yes, and what? Yes, and what? So this is exactly what I want to speak about, because what what actually is going on over there is a story that um, the emperor of Rome basically um, reads the Torah and he opens the Eila Mishpatim, which is one of the um, par uh, portions of the Torah. And he reads, the which means that the moment a person steals what's called human trafficking in our language, human trafficking is punishable by death. So he reads that, and he read before the story of the brothers of Yosef selling Yosef. He says to the rabbi, which is Rabban Gamliel, and he tells him, the and he calls ten great scholars, Dinu Mishpat Zela Ashuray. Judge yourself this case. What what should be the the law according to your Torah? And they said he, that the din is that he's punishable by death. So he says to them, then where is your brother that you sold him to the Yishmaelites? And now you have to receive the din of Shamayim. This law you have to receive upon yourselves. And you will suffer the um, sins of your fathers, which are the heads of the tribes. And they said, okay, we're going to check. Give us three days to check if actually Hashem has decided like you're deciding as well. And they sent the, the Rabbi Shmuel Kohen Gadol. He was one of the, he was the high priest and he was a very special person. So he went up to Shaman to see if actually Hashem himself agrees to this din. And yes. And there's a famous chazanus uh, on this Tia Rabbi Ishmael Atzmai. I don't know who performs it, but a great chazanus. Um, yes, you have to receive upon yourself this punishment, this suffering. And, and he started killing them. And then the entire 
uh, 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 the continuation of this uh, period of this uh, Tfilah prayer is describing the death of these 10 um, great, great leaders of Amish and generation, including Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Ishmael, the high priest, Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Hanina ben Trajan. So, um, yeah, so this is a very sad story. And, and, and the question, the basic question when we read the story is, there's the, the, there's the sad part of the story, losing such tzaddikim, the way that they died, that maybe the first question should be, why is he interfering? Why is he interfering? It is not for him to come and carry out the judgment. Just so what are you looking for? Sorry? Just he said, what's his name? Um, let's see if there's the exact, it doesn't say the exact name. Let's see. Adrian, no. One of, probably one of those, uh, one of those uh, people can see here. Um, it was a general time, by the way, that the Romans persecuted the Jews and killed many rabbis that taught Torah also. Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai, Rashmi, right, who wrote the Zohar. So he was a student of Rabbi Akiva. He was pretty much in that same time. He escaped to the cave for 12 years and another 12 months after that, 13 years in total. That was also because he was teaching Torah. So that was the idea behind the, these Asara Hawagema Futsu. But the question is, why are they, sorry? What year? Um, this we're talking about probably 100 uh, um, to the county. 80? 80, yes. 100 after? 80, yes. Approximately, it might, again. It might be Adrian. Okay. Okay, makes sense. So, um, so the, the first question, perhaps the most basic question, is why is he interfering? What is his connection? Why is he judging the Jews because of um, the sins of their fathers? First of all, he doesn't know the calculations. And not only that, but maybe they were punished in a certain way. And most important is what is his connection here to the story? And this is the first time we see that Jews are judged with a double standard. Why? Because it doesn't make no sense that you should judge a person because of the, the his uh, ancestors many years before that. You don't even know the full story. It happened over a thousand years before that. Mm. Nevertheless, they are judged. And what's your term, sir? Sorry? So this, uh, Jacob said Adrianos. I'm not sure, but it might be worse. He was famous for the Judaic wars. Mm -hmm. So m most of the wars that came after this destruction of the second temple by Titus um, were in his time. That's interesting. And there were many more wars after that as well. There was the Rabbi, uh, there was Bar Kokhba, the rebellion of Bar Kokhba that happened in Beitar. And that was after the, de yeah, not far from here. And it was after the destruction of the second temple, still many, many Jews, and they started to uh, fight back again. And by the way, the Jews were very, very powerful and strong warriors. Um, um, I heard from Rabbi Steinsaltz, the son of late Rabbi Steinsaltz, um, that um, that the Jews were, were well known to be very powerful and strong um, fighters and warriors. But what happened in Beitar is that there was such a big, unfortunately, such a big a massacre there that the Jews decided that they will never wear arms again. That was when the exile became a definite. And not only the exile taking them to other places, but the exile in, in, in terms of um, the feeling that we cannot protect ourselves, cannot support ourselves, cannot wear arms, bear arms. So that's our question. And we see it now. There are double standards that we are being judged according to. And people don't see ashamed of it. You know, any person with a bit of common sense would say, it's like that one of, and there's so many examples. It's, and each example is just more crazy than the others. So the craziest example perhaps is, why are we 
um, um, exchanging one Israeli prisoner, uh, sorry, a uh, captive, a per person that was kidnapped for three Palestinians. Isn't that showing that we um, uh, okay. treat Palestinians uh, like they are worthless? Did you share this? So I think this is the winner, yeah. right? That's the, that's definitely the best. Uh, um, and why? It's because first of all, these are innocent people, um, and those are terrorists. That they, they sh let's put it this way: they shouldn't be released. They should be released without anyone. Right. Uh, and but but it, not only that; it's much more than that. Um, um, we are not the ones that decide the, uh, we would want them all for free, right? We don't want to, uh, we don't want to exchange any, any terrorists for that. So in other words, there's for sure, definitely a double standard that people are acting by. And, 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 and there are many, many examples. We're not going to go into each and every example, but uh, it's just so funny. The question is why, and this is what we want to deal with. And especially in connection to the, uh, uh Kansas of Hanukkah and last night. We had a beautiful, beautiful menorah lighting. This was on Batala Street, Gerard Bafar, and it was uh, with uh, part of a whole program of lighting up the menorah and these glow in the dark. The whole idea was glowing in the dark. And um, it was a beautiful uh, uh, lighting and people came from all around. Tonight we're having at five o'clock um, on Aza Street. There is a park. It's like a, it's a small uh, a, a playground and, 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 and a park. Um, so you're welcome for sure to join us. We're going to have also um, activities for kids, donuts, and Rabbi Doron Peretz, who's the head of Mizrahi, the world Mizrahi, right next to us. His son, unfortunately, is missing. So they don't even know, there's no confirmation that he's kidnapped. So um, missing from very early on. Very early on, from the day that it all started, from Simchas Torah. So unfortunately, it's a very, very um, uh, sad story. And Rabbi Peretz himself is a a very strong personality, very special person, you know, just to deal with such a thing. And we're going to light the menorah um, for the merit of all the uh, hostages that they should return quickly. Aza. Sorry? Which part? Aza, that is Aza, Aza and Matudela, which is, it's, uh, there's a park. If you go down Aza Street on the right hand side, you will see going down, you'll see there's a park. It's right across. Uh, Bibi's house, uh, uh, Prime Minister's house. Well, we'll be there. So, okay. <laughs> You're having dinner there? Yeah. Hanukkah. Tea. 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 Okay. Five o'clock. <laughs> Tea time. Um, so, so, okay. So, how's this connected to Hanukkah? This is the idea of the candles of Beis English. If you've ever visited the uh, Almonot, the castles and uh, let's say versailles right what what's the what's armonot not a castle a castle or a uh, a palace like a castle a palace so you'll see the windows there are all the way at the top and the windows there are at the top and they are pretty wide they're pretty wide outside they are narrow and inside they become wide why is that because the purpose was not to bring fresh air in they had their servants that used to uh, fan them with AC, whatever they needed. Mm -hmm. But what they wanted, and this is the idea of the disconnection from the crowd, from the public, they wanted walls that are very, very thick and that they cause a separation. This is my uh, uh, fortress. Uh, this is my home. I don't want any connection to the outside. Yes, I want light from the outside. So then the outside is small, but as it goes inside the windows, they expand and that's how they get more and more light. So um, this is basically the style of most uh, palaces. And um, if you go, you can visit, you can see, I just looked into it. I, I, I looked for pictures. I wasn't there, but I looked for pictures. And this is what you see. It's very interesting. Um, in Beis Amikosh, it was the opposite. Beis Amikosh was um, um, a Tumim Shkufi. The windows, they were made in a way that they were sealed, but see-through as well. Which means that, um, um, and, and not only the, uh, the fact that they, were, that, that they were sealed, but also the shape was that it was narrow on the inside and 
it became wider on the outside. Why was that? To bring the light out, to spread the light. And this idea is first uh, brought in um, uh, Isaiah, in Yeshayahu. The goyim All goyim, the fact that I'm Israel, they are light to many nations. And this is something, you know, this is, even we take the symbol of, uh, the, of the state of Israel. It's a menorah that represents light. Which other country, their symbol is to share light. Most countries, it's about their own nationality, about Italians, <laughs> um, right? The American eagle, it's great. It represents America. Um, and the, the, the American interest come first. So yes, uh, the, the eagle can also protect many others. It's considered the greatest bird. The symbol of America is the one dollar. You want God. to trust. In God we trust, right? Which is also, that's that, right. That's, uh, that's a very it's special idea. It's an idea of belief. In God we trust, all of us take care. <laughs> <laughs> right. So... So we see that we have a certain mission. It's a kind of a mission to bring the light and to express the light of that we have that's within Amistral of what morality is. And by the way, this is something that the Germans in the Second World War, the, the Nazi, they spoke clearly against. Part of what Hitler was very upset with, and this is what he says, is that there's a Jewish, what do you say, Matspun? sense of guilt, the Jewish guilt, or um, that's the idea that Jews throughout the years, and this is something that you see even scholars wrote throughout many, many, um, uh, in many letters that they wrote to their conscience. friends. Conscience, right. So conscience, awareness, morality, all of these ideas of what is good in the world, the definition of good, and this is something that we were known very well for. By the way, there was one of the scholars wrote to Martin Buber, uh, who is a German philosopher, moved to Israel and was part of the Zionist movement. He told him he does not want to be part of the Zionist movement because he understood that his mission is to be an all like Goyim, to be a light for the Gentiles all around the world. And in that way, in that sense, that is a big part of our mission in exile. Loy Am Yisrael did not exile uh, um, uh, to different countries, but for one reason, that um, nations would join us. Sometimes they join us in taking part in mamish converting. We don't have any command to convert people. It's not part of our religion, unlike all, pretty much all the other religions. However, yes, we do want then to follow moral laws, basically seven uh, laws of Noah. But it's not only that, it's the idea that Am Yisrael basically represents what is right and what is good and what is kind in the world. And there are those that say that this even started with the times of Avram Avinu. Since the times of Avram Avinu, he was the first one who's called Avram Ivri. Why, what is the word Ivri? The other side, Me'evel Anahar. That is the literal translation. They turned it into a Hebrew because that represents a yet that he is the one that stands. And yes, 100% the Jews stood for, mora for, for morality all the time. And, and this is a clear idea. So when, when people are looking at us and, and looking at our actions, and you see it from the basic uh, uh, um, the, the att attention that we draw, that we get during these days. No other conflict gets even 10% of us. We, we can be happy with your friends. If you tell people you go around, you'll tell them I'm a Jew, I'm from Israel. So you'll get greeted, probably. I don't know how, but you'll get greeted. They recognize you, they know. And, <laughs> and why is that? It's because, yes, they are looking for what is truly good. And sometimes they do also challenge and they want to know the answers. And the secret is to stand strong and to believe that we are light for the nations around us. That is what they want to hear. They want to hear why the war is just and why doing what we need to do within the process of fighting is also just. 
and using this weapon and that weapon, it's up to our decision. Sometimes we underestimate, and this is the idea of exile, we underestimate our powers, we underestimate our ability and our influence that we can have over the Gentiles around us. Yes, they are looking for guidance. What is good, what is bad. I think most of the world opposes Israel. They, they oppose Israel. When you know that someone um, appreciates you, you know it when he can also criticize you. If he's indifferent, if he does not care, so this is what's happened with all the other conflicts. People are, are now, when we are talking now, people are being massacred in Sudan, right? No one really spoke about it. Okay. The war in Ukraine that took a lot of uh, highlights at the beginning and uh, headers in all the press, etc. everyone's forgot about it. It's like this peace now between Russia and Ukraine. No one knows what's happening there. And no one really cares. So why is that? It's yes, because people care more about what we do. It's a, a lot of it is about hatred, but what hides within there, and at least the potential is that not only for them, but mainly also for ourselves, is that Yes, we are a nation of light and bringing light and spreading light on these days of Hanukkah, part of that light is fighting in Gaza. I think in Ukraine, there's no real definition of who's good and who's bad. It's confused. I think in Israel, there are strong sides. Most of the world is absolutely, I think, opposed to the yeah. morality of the Jews. Right. And all the other conflicts. You mentioned Ukraine and Armenians. Armenians and Syria. Ar Armenia, yeah. Cyprus. Turkey is occupying Northwest Cyprus. Half of 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 and according to the Sarim, according to the ministers, there are 70 Sarim that they are in control of the Gentiles around us, and they, uh, um, they uh, uh, influence them. And and that, zero two percent of the world population. It's yes. Still the spirit. Right, right. And a lot of it is because of uh, uh, not knowing really what's happening. And in that case, we have to try and show them. And yes, sometimes it's their Sarim that influence them to go the other way, the other direction. Yes, sir. I think that the double standard really started after the Shoah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they felt guilty. Mm -hmm. Now, they want to clean themselves and put the floor on us. Oh, yes. Fazala. Putting the floor on us, they get free from their guilt. Right. I, I think that's a good point. 50%. Of your or maybe even 80 percent, yes, 20 percent who said, Wait, we get rid of these people now, they have a country, now they have an army, we fail. We fail. Yeah, uh -huh. there are always the traditional anti Semites that would never, uh, they're so much easier, they're much easier. I say you hate Jews, I have nothing to discuss with you. There's into hate, okay, you yeah, challenge me to educate you on 75 years, right? Let's go and eat. we're having. From uh, oh, okay, so that's going again to the idea of um, us being a light to them. And by the way, every place that there was a yid, you know, and there's a proof to this, every place that a Jew came to, it was always that he spread kindness and people were introduced to Jewish values. I've got two stories about that. First of all, there was one Jew that Hitler saved. Hitler himself saved a Jew. This was a Jewish doctor from Austria took care of his mother when she was sick with cancer and did not charge them a pain. And he Schmanz. yeah, escaped and uh, let him out. And you know, a few other uh, Nazis did the same to people that they knew. A very small, but it shows again that, uh, and that th there was true good and they knew that there's good. You can't really fool a person. They say Rabbi Jacobson told this joke and it's a very good joke says uh, is the difference between Am Yisrael and the Gentiles. A Gentile said, these Jews, I can't stand the Jews. They are thieves. They are uh, um, 
uh, killing them, whatever, right? Um, so, but they tell him, but what about uh, your doctor, uh, Dr. Cohen? Ah, Dr. Cohen, he's different. He's very special. He's, uh, you won't find many people. And what about your lawyer? Uh, uh, whatever. Rosenberg. Rosenberg, right? What about, no, he's, he's very different. He's, but when it comes to Am Yisrael, we act the opposite. You ask the Jew, what do you say about Am Yisrael, about the Jews? Am Yisrael, chai. The Jews are unbelievable. Look what um, uh, unity there is. Look what kindness people are doing. And tell me, what about your neighbor, Mr. Cohen? Mm -hmm. Oh, he, he's a terrible person. He always leaves this. And <laughs> it's a different, uh, different idea. Okay, that's, that's something that he, uh, that he shared. So... The, the double standard is yes, because we set light to the entire world. And there was, um, in South Africa, I know, <clears throat> um, there was uh, always, um, I think it was a Chinese lady that used to donate to a certain uh, Jewish organization that does chesed. So once they asked her, why, why do you donate? You're not benefiting from this organization. You're not Jewish yourself. Um, and she said, because this is the only organization that thinks about others, that cares about others. It's like a, a community feeling that many people don't have. They don't have this feeling anywhere in the world. And um, back to what you said, I'm a Fuzalm of Farad Ben I mean, yes, we are scattered amongst the nations to teach them these ideas. And Yitzhak Rabin once, when he said, when he brought the, the Oslo Agreement, and this is where you see his big, big mistake, he says, Lo od am levadad mishkon. The, the verse tells us that Bil'am, in his prophecy, said about Am Yisrael that we are a am levadad mishkon, we are a nation that are to ourselves. <clears throat> Which means that um, we are always going to be isolated, slash persecuted, slash judged, by double standards, etc., etc. So he said, after he brought these agreements, these Oslo agreements, he said, now we are not going to be a nation to ourselves. We will be able to um, be part of the United Nations, to be with everyone. Because, yeah, we are giving the Palestinians a certain level of authority. And with like quoting the verse opposite of what the verse says as a prophecy of Bilam, the Rebbe said that our power and what is so special about us is that we are to ourselves. That's what makes us unique. That's what makes Am Yisrael so special. This is the story of the Menorah. This is the story of Hanukkah. Yes, we have to make it clear to ourselves that we are here. We're not acting in a violent way like any other country would do. Right? If someone would do this to Russia or to the United States or to France or to the Netherlands, any country, you would see the same sites, if not worse, on the other side. It would be over by now, with the hostages, with everything together. But what we are doing is we are not acting with vengeance just against them. We are bringing light to the world. And yes, this light should also, it's got to be uh, extended. Sometimes you've got to light not one, two candles, you've got to light all the eight. And that's why there's room to add more light. But what we are doing, our fight and our mission is 100% light. What about Kennekamot? So that belongs to Hashem. It's a very good point. And uh, what about vengeance? That, yes, uh, and if you would ask people now, I think 50% of uh, the Israelis would say, eh, forget about it. We are, don't, don't take revenge, right? And even right after the war, I think there was a nice amount of 30% that said, that, leave the vengeance. Am Yisrael are tired of vengeance. This is something that Hashem has to do for his sake also, not only for our sake, because the most, the worst thing about what happened is that there's also a Chilul Hashem. A Chilul Hashem means that Hashem's name that rests upon every single Jew was also massacred um, on the 7th of October. And that's why it belongs to him also to reclaim his uh, honor back. And that is, but Am Yisrael, we are tired. We don't, we don't want to, we want to bring light. We want to add in good. And the fight, the war that we are currently uh, in the middle of, 
is bringing light to the world. What do you think, Yakov Man? Majority of the world. I think that's what happened. If I take in, consider in consideration what Rabbi Soloveitchik said about Amalek, that Amalek is not an ethnic population. Yeah. Whoever hates us in that way is Amalek. If you take the Poles made by themselves in Gaza, yeah. where they say that 85% of the population agrees with Hamas, yeah. they are Amalek. Yeah. So what does the Torah say about the Amalek? You have to wipe them out. So no light for them. No. There is no light for them. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good question. Rabbi Ginsburg says this. Yeah. It's, it's what a, did he say? Rabbi Ginsburg says this. He agrees with you. Let's say I agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very good question. I, 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 I don't want to say definitely to one side or the other. You know, there is definitely a difference between if, yeah. BB and Begin. Yeah. The answer of Begin was I'm not bowing to the American yeah. president. Yes. This is bowing. He's bowing. That's how he's always there. It's a, it's a big problem. That to buy. And by the way, this is another thing. It's just in connection to this is that. The Rebbe always spoke um, uh, to the Israeli officials that, it, let's put it this way, you can't fight against the American president. So if, you, if we think that we are smart and we're going to go deliberately against the Americans, it's, a, it's not going to work 100%. Begin. However, Begin, although, by the way, did not 100% do that. Unfortunately, he gave back all of Sinai. Shamir did. Shamir, oh, Shamir did it. Shamir is the strong worm who was able to cut stone, the stones of Beis Amigdash that were done with the Shamir. The only way the Gemara says that you can hold the Shamir is with Oferet, which is a vessel that can bystand laser. Well, so that's the connection that the Shamir has some kind of radioactive, not radioactive laser. Oferet, I don't know, I've got to check it out. I've got to check it out. But it's, it's very interesting to see the connection between the two. So Shamir was the one who was able to bystand. So but the Rebbe told him a tactic to use, and this is a tactic that makes sense. Many times, America wants something, but they cannot go and claim it and say it out loud. They need someone to pull him in mm -hmm. and to help them to to bring up their, their will and what they, the Chosme is to know what they really want and to lead them into it, not to follow their instructions, because following their instructions is like Ukraine. You don't want to be Ukraine, and we're not Ukraine. We are a light to the world in the same way, and this is maybe extreme words, but in the same way that North Korea is dark to the world, we have to be light to the world. We are counter to North Korea. And sometimes that requests extreme actions but to do what is right, to do what is good. And anyone with common sense knows exactly what is right and what is good. We don't need explanations. So to what extent do they have the real din of Amalek? Today, it's hard to say that they have the real din of Amalek because originally, yes, there is such an idea of only a specific um, ethnic, ethnic group then, but, uh, and, the, but, and, and the law of Amalek applied only then. Now, you can't just, it's very hard to say that you can just go and, and, and do what they did to Amalek. Um, and, and I think that this is our uh, challenge today of trying to find a certain solution. And if you would ask, what about re-educating? So perhaps re-educating, I don't know if it's a real option, but... It takes 50 years. It takes 50 years. It takes 50 years. At least. Yeah. Okay. If it's done properly during those 50 years, they are... A teenager of, 10, of 15 years. You need 50, at least 50 years right. to change. So, so, so there's two ways of re-education. One way is to really sit and to teach them um, and to talk to them and to bring, uh, to bring them good information, let's say, right? The, the other way is, and you'll see that's a difference between the older um, Arabs that even live here in Yerushalayim and the younger generation. The older generation, they remember the victory of the Six-Day War, if not personally, but firsthand from their parents that actually remember the miraculous victory. 
And if not that, they remember Khamat Magen of 2002, 2003, which, uh, which um, 48, and they remember 48, but they can remember the young generation, and that's the biggest problem, is the ages of 30 um, and younger, and perhaps a bit older as well, that they don't remember Israel's strong hand. And yes, you can see how they deal with in their own countries, in Saudi Arabia and Dubai, very peaceful places. People don't misbehave there. Why? Because if someone does misbehave, they get treated with a strong fist. So that's another way of re-educating, but you've got to say that this is what you're doing. And this is the idea of light. Light, you cannot hide light. There's no such a thing of hiding light. Light is here, and it's seen far, far away, much more than the size of the darkness. It's not an equivalent. It's not that uh, uh, one centimeter of light can fight back one centimeter of darkness. No. Small light can be seen from a far distance as well. But we have to say clearly that we are spreading light, and this is our purpose. So... You know, this is about yeah. percent of American Jews, the youth, are Holocaust deniers. Um, it's a strong claim to say, uh, Jewish youth or in general. I, I don't think so. Maybe I think Jewish that today, people. I think that today, especially after what they feel of what's ha what happened and what's happening now, I think that uh, today people are very much aware that it's reality. Even even uh, yeah, the people with Hamas. Over not twenty percent. Not not twenty percent. It sounds shocking, but it's. A, it's I a find it bad. hard to believe that that's that, yeah. that rate that amount. It's there's a, a lot of awareness today to what really happened, and yes, sometimes they're out there demonstrating in masses. I don't know how much of them. It's Hanukkah. Yeah. The Jews have always been Nikyavnim. So that's another interesting thing because we're doing tonight again that had uh, we did Moitzi Shabbos that had the Menorah. You were there, Chanach Moitzi Shabbos, right? So there's, uh, we we came there and there was a protest going on, and these are the guys that are protesting. To um, they started off bring bring them home now. They the saw that truth. yeah, and then they went to we've got to send Bibi away and bring them home. And against the Haredim, against the leaders of the Haredim, against the coalition money, all the excuses. And I wanted and to ask them. So I wanted to ask them what what do you really want? What's like the end? Uh, I don't know if they even know what they really uh, what they really want. But the question is: Should we invite them? Should we take? Uh, should we include them in what's happening? Or should we consider them to be mityavnim like then? Am Yisrael fought against the mityavnim in the times of Hanukkah? That is part of what we thank Hashem for. And Baal Hanisim, Masata. Uh, um, we're praising Hashem. Thank you for um, um, being victorious against the impure. Is that something that we have to thank? Is that something that shouldn't happen? Is that not part of nature? Part, part of the miracle? It's not a miracle. This is what this is what should be. The answer is that we were fighting against the mitiavnim as well, and that is the miracle because they were after all also Jews. However, today. I don't think that they are considered 100% mityavnim. And this is also connected to the idea that in the times of Moshiach, everyone will be redeemed. And we are getting very close to the times of Moshiach. This is my personal opinion, so you can uh, uh, totally feel free to disagree. But um, we and want these, them as well. People demonstrating a traitors. So you're right that we may perhaps don't need to give them the stage. And I don't agree with anything of what they say. But if I have the opportunity to like with them the Hanukkiah, so I want to include them because I think that, yeah, Hashem says that it won't be like in the times of Egypt. We're going to read, we're going to learn soon. In the times of Egypt, um, Am Yisrael basically, um, what was it? 80% um, stayed there. Only 20% uh, ended up coming out. Why? Because they were, they weren't Nityavnim, they weren't traders. They were super traders then. They didn't believe in the miracles. They didn't believe in Moshe. They didn't want to leave Egypt. So, in other words, they didn't want even a better life. These people perhaps want a better life. In the wrong ways, of course, but they... But it's the, uh, the understanding that they are a part of Am Yisrael after all. Sure. Okay, so after the, these um, controversial uh, words, so uh, Rabbi Kowalski, I think, will say the... 
the right opinion about uh, about what's happening in connection to Hanukkah.